This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So when you're working in DeepPython, it can be easy to kind of lose track of what your scale is. So like here, for example, I've got two spheres that I've made. Um, I made them at points 1, 1, 1 and 1, 0, negative 2. But unless I really keep in mind what those points were or put in a label or something, it can kind of be challenging to, you know, figure out where, um, kind of where everything is, so to speak. And so what I'd like to do is take a look at how we can easily make a coordinate grid in here. Just so you have an idea of, you know, how far to the left and right, how far up and down things are in your VPython animation. So what I want to make for you is a little function. We'll call it make grid that's going to uh, uh, kind of automatically create a grid. So you could just take this function, copy and paste it into your glow script code and then automatically get a grid in the background. Now we're going to need to know two things for this grid. We're going to need to know how far out you want it to go. So we'll call that X max. And we want to know how often you want the grid spacing. So we'll call that DX. So I'll just leave a comment here. The X max equals the uh, extent of the grid in each direction. And DX is going to be our grid spacing. So a default value might be make grid, um, or not default, but a nice value to try out might be make grid of let's say four and uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5, now let's just go with one for right now. Yeah, let's just go with one. So what I should expect to see there would be four grid marks going to the right, four grid marks going left, uh, four grid marks going up, four grid marks going down. So let's see how we would do this. I want to do this using vPython's curve command. So the way curve works is you specify a list of points. So I can specify a point here and a point here. And vPython is going to connect those two points with a line. Now you can give as many points as you want and the curve will connect each of them. That's why it's called a curve because you're approximating a curve as a series of line segments. But really, I just need point to point going on along here. So let's think about this. I will need to loop around each value of X and Y. So I'll need to go for X in range, uh, let's say zero, not zero, excuse me. We'll go negative X max to X max in steps of DX. Now I'll need to make a little adjustment to this. I want to have this endpoint included. So I'll need to say plus DX uh, so that um, I actually get the last point uh, yeah, 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 that'll work. So what this will allow me to do is I'm moving along the X direction, right? So this will allow me to create the vertical lines, right? Because as I'm moving along in the X direction, I'll be able to make these vertical lines. So that'll be a little note I leave for myself here is we are first going to create vertical lines. And that means my Y values need to be fixed. So I'll need to make a curve that is, uh, let's see, we'll give it position. I need to give it a list of points here. So we'll say vector. Let's see, um, go, I'm varying X, so that stays as it is. And then I want to go from the maximum Y value to the minimum Y value. So we'll go uh, X max there. So I'm calling it X max, even though it's also Y max. Um, and then we'll just go to y, or excuse me, not x max, we'll go to negative x max here. Uh, let's close that up, close that up. All right, let's return and just make sure that that gives me what I think it will. All right, sure enough, there it goes. I've got my vertical grid bars. Now I have to do the same thing and go along the horizontal grid bars, which means I need to be looping over y. So we'll just take this thing here, go copy and paste. And we'll say for y in range, uh, same thing, negative x max to x max plus dx. But now I'm varying y, so we'll now change the y coordinates to y. So y and y here. And now I have to fix x, right? I'm no longer looping over x, so I need this to be x max and negative x max. Basically, one of them's always going to be at the two endpoints, so that the other one can be the one that varies. All right, with that set up, uh, I should be able to run this. 
And there we go, you get yourself a nice little grid here. And you see I can rotate around, the grid stays in place. Now I know where I am. Um, it's, it's, this is gonna work out best for you, I think, if you're looking at a, at a two-dimensional problem. With three dimensions, I could technically move, make a, another grid going out this way. I'm not, I suppose that's visually helpful. So I guess what I could do for you would be to have this just be make a grid, and then I could define a new function called make 3D grid if you wanted it. I've always been satisfied with just a 2D grid, but I suppose uh, you might be interested in make grid 3D. And so here what I'll need to do is just repeat this process for each of the planes that I have, right? So I'll need to have uh, looping over X and then moving Z. So we'll leave Y at zero and change Z to X max and negative X max. Um, and then I'll need to do for Z in this range. And now I'll need to fix X, leave Y at zero, Z here, Z here. Okay, so uh, let's do this. So this first part is gonna be the XY plane. So make XY plane. This next chunk here is making the XZ plane. You just name the plane after the two things that are changing, which means for this last piece, I need the YZ plane. Do you call it the XZ plane or the ZX plane? I guess ZX would be cyclic order, but XZ is alphabetical order. I mean, it's a plane. It Does it matter? I don't know. Um, if you've got an opinion on that, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure you already have. Um, let's see, so we got for Y in this range. So now I need to leave Z fixed at zero and change y around. Here I need to leave x fixed at zero and change z around. So I'll need this to go here. There we go. All right, uh, let's comment this part out and we will make grid 3D. Uh, let's do the same thing, four comma one. That spacing worked out well. Oh, and there you go. You got yourself a nice little mesh there. Um, I suppose that could be, I mean, I mean, depending on what you're doing, that could be helpful or it could be uh, confusing to the eye, but it's it's nice because you can you can just look along the grid and get an estimate of what each point's uh, location is in terms of X, Y, and Z coordinates, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you also might like to have some control over when this thing is visible, like maybe you want to turn it on with the click of a button or something. So what we'll do is make a uh, we'll need to make a list. Let's just call it grid, maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, and so we'll make this a list. We'll say grid equals empty list, and then we'll say grid dot append. Um, I believe you can make curves invisible. If not, we will find out shortly. All right, so we're going to pin that to grid, uh, and then we'll do the same thing here. We'll say global grid, grid equals open bracket, close bracket. So this really only works if you um, if you call one of these functions once, which I, I'm assuming you would do, but I don't know. I can I can mistake proof it uh, later if that becomes necessary. Uh, always happy to get a future video at, uh, queued up. Um, let's see. So we'll do that. Do this here. Paste, paste. Okay, cool. And now what I can do, I can make a function, kind of like we did with the axes in another video, uh, turn grid on or off. Actually, speaking of which, let's just open our make axes and copy this function here. So I'll copy this, paste this in here. Uh, we'll make this grid instead of axes. And so for shape in grid, shape in grid, and then let's grab, so what I'm doing here is I'm going for each item in grid, I'm turning it visible or invisible. And so that should work for every uh, curve object that we have there. Let's try it out with the 2D version first. It shouldn't make a difference, so let's try it out. And the way we'll test this is just with a little loop here. 
where we're gonna loop over here, we're gonna sleep for a second, and we're gonna turn the grid on or turn the grid off. And I've got global grid in everything, so I should be okay. So let's see what happens here. Okay, it went away. And there it came back. Okay, great. So uh, if you wanted to, uh, you know, have your grid disappear at some point, you can set that in the code, or you can set a little button off to the side to turn your grid on and off. Um, let's make sure that works with the 3D version as well. Should work, because it's still just a collection of curves. Okay, turn off works. And turn on works. Okay, great. So anyway, I hope that's useful to you, um, getting these grids on the screen. Hope that's useful to you and your students uh, about um, helping you find where these objects are in three dimensions. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.